Hi everyone. Today our project is to install a ceiling fan and a switch for ceiling fan. We're going to have some fun today and uh, I think you'll like this project. It's from start to finish. There's nothing on the walls now and we're going to actually install the switch into the wall. We're going to have to cut sheetrock out. We're going to patch some sheetrock. We're also going to do some, uh, some painting of the patch. I'm going to show you how to do all that stuff. So when we get done, you're going to feel comfortable that if I can do it, you can do it. So stay tuned. Okay, this is where the existing light switches are. What we're going to be doing is installing a fan switch next to one of these switches. So we're going to have three switches in a row. We're going to end up taking this out of the wall. So I just want to show you. We've got two switches here now. We're going to add a third one. And you'll see how I do that right now. Okay, here was a black wire to the left switch. Here was the, left, the one to the right switch. What, what's important to know is when you get wire, usually you get a black wire, a white wire, and a ground wire in one piece of cabling. It's called, that's called 12-2, uh, 14-2, uh, whatever. It's, it's, it's important to see where these wires go so that when you get ready to hook all this back up, you know that this is for your left switch and this one is for your right switch. That's really important as you pull everything apart. So try to keep track of these wires as you can. You can, you can put a little uh, curly cue in it or something or mark it with a felt tip pin or, or put a little piece of masking tape on. I think that's what we'll do. We'll put masking tape on these two black wires so that we can identify them uh, when we get ready to reinstall the light switches. Okay, this box is mounted to the stud here. I wanted to show you, this is just a single gang box. It looks just like this, except this is a double gang box. And you see the nails here. These nails are nailed into the, into the stud. So w what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip a, a hacksaw in there and we're gonna cut the nails off. If you can imagine these nails going into studs. And I've already kind of cut this back just a little bit, shoved a screwdriver in there, got a little bit of a gap there and I shine a flashlight in there to verify there's a nail right here and there's a nail right there. So we're going to shove a little hacksaw in there and we're going to cut those out so that we can pull this box out. I'm going to take this hacksaw and I'm going to use this. What I like about this hacksaw is the hacksaw blade usually fits right here. As you can see, I, un I, I undid it and there's a little bar inside of here and I ran the hacksaw blade in here. So I'm going to turn this around. I'm just going to use this like a little handsaw. I'm going to go in there and cut those screws, those nails out. I'm going to just take this in there. I'm going to feel the nail. I'm just going to start sawing it. Just nice and slow, just back and forth. Make sure you got the hacksaw blades facing the right direction when you put it in them. I'm just going to cut those nails off now. Okay, now I'm going to look at this. Make sure, see? It's all loose now. It's all loose, ready to take out. Now I have to fish the box out and push the wires back up in there very gently so I don't mess up the wall. So this is kind of time, tedious and time consuming, but just do a little bit at a time and you'll be able to get it. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to put this three gang switch in this location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure for this box. I'm going to mark the wall out here. Now, I guess I'm going to cut that out now. That will make it easier to get this plastic box out of here. So make sure you measure nice and careful on here utilizing the little flaps. This is called a cut-in box. We're going to shove that in there and uh, I'll show you how to do that in a minute but uh, just wanted to let you know. Measure it, cut the sheetrock out first and then we'll be able to pull this box out. I try to get the box out but it's not coming out. It'll give me a little bit of more slop and easier if I cut this out first. As you can see I've marked this out. I want to cut it with this this sheetrock saw. This is called a sheetrock saw. I'm just going to cut very carefully, nice and slow. I already kind of checked that there's nothing in the way. But I'm still going to go slow because I don't know what, I don't know if there's something way back in there. I just, it's always better to be safe than sorry. So just nice and slow. Now I got this cut. I'll pull that out. You can see how much more extra room I have now. Now I can slide this box around. I got plenty of room to work. You still, this might have some flanges on the back for the nail uh, holders. So you may still have to get in there with some, with some cutters and cut the plastic box, but at least now you can see where all the wires are. Make sure not to cut any of the wires. 
and then we're going to work on this box and cut it and bend it and do some different things to it to get it out of here. We're not going to use this box anymore, we're going to throw it away. Okay, another way, this is a stud finder, and another way to find out the stud, if you were wondering why I use the nail method, I mean the nail method is a good way. You can also get a little stud finder like this, it kind of helps you find the, the, uh, the studs inside a wall or the ceiling joists. And what you do is you, is you run it across the wall and lights will come up here. See the red lights? Once it's green, that means that's where the edge of your stud is, from there over this way if you're sliding it this direction. So the light's green saying it's ready to go. Now it's green. There's the edge of the stud and the stud is from there over. You measure over three quarters. There's a little notch here. That's three quarters. You put a little pencil hole there, mark, whatever. That, that would be the center of a stud. So this is, this is kind of a handy thing if you're doing little projects around the house or, or handyman type things. It's, it's nice to get one of these, read the directions, and uh, stud finders are a good thing.